The New York Women's Foundation celebrates their annual women's breakfast, honoring the achievements that have made a positive impact and influenced the lives of women and girls everywhere. Since 1987, the New York Women's Foundation has been elevating girls, women, and gender expansive individuals and their families. Through their philanthropic work, they continue to invest in bold community-led solutions to ignite action for gender, economic, and racial justice. And here to share more, we welcome New York Women's Foundation Vice President of Development, Madeline Holder. Hello and welcome, Madeline. Good morning, Rina. What a pleasure to be with you today, having Café con Leche. Yes, yes. As we begin to discuss the marvelous breakfast, the annual breakfast that you are holding uh, that's up and coming, honoring these magnificent women in different genres. Yes, it's our pleasure. It's our signature event. Actually, it will be held on May 8th and pay tribute to extraordinary honorees and grantee partners who are advancing innovative and bold solutions to create an equitable and just future for women and families in New York City and beyond. It, this is our 37th year of hosting the Celebrating Women Breakfast. Now, the one thing I find really interesting about this, and I absolutely love, is that you're embracing all genders in this uh, initiative. So let's just talk a little bit about that aspect of it, right? Let, let's talk about its roots, right? You just said uh, this is the 37th year that you're celebrating. Uh, so let's talk about how it's expanded and how it's adapted to just circumstances and our society for that matter. We understand that the foundation is a cross-cultural alliance, and 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 by that we mean that we have our with our mandate of being of advancing racial plus gender racial and economic equity uh, and justice for for women and women is defined in a very expansive way. Cis and trans women and, and also gender non-conforming non folks. So the foundation's approach is that all communities to be a part of the change and then part of the solutions, because we understand that uh, issues and solutions live in the same place. So of course we want every gender and represented at the foundation when and it comes to women but, you know and that's a beautiful thing because i i want to say that most importantly it's a matter of feeling safe right and so yes. when you invite that that level of inclusivity it, it's almost uh, uh being a stand for like you know evolution for that matter right which is what we're discussing um you know to embrace women uh you know either cis or transgender or gender non-conforming or non-binary it's really, it's, it's of the times, we'll say. And so um, when you're selecting your honorees, are you selecting them from that category as well? Absolutely. And uh, we want you to know that, you know, the, the selection of uh, honorees is a very lengthy process and our list is long. Um, we want, you know, women and that, that cis and trans women and gender non-conforming all to be represented as and also acclaimed in communities. So because we understand that there is value in celebrating every part of our community. Which brings me to our fabulous honorees, which is why I said different genres. I happen to be familiar with Andrea Arroyo. I mean, most people are familiar with Cynthia Ellen Nixon, but please feel free to go through the, uh, the list of honorees and what they represent and what that, that process was like in choosing them. Our honorees are, you know, there's a, there's a nomination process. Most of it we listen because the foundation is known for listening to the community. So a lot of our honorees are recommended by our board, by our committees, and by our uh, grantee partners themselves. First of all, this is a celebration 
of the work of our grantee partners in the five boroughs of New York City, acknowledging that those issues and solutions that they are advancing are vital to the economic security of women cis and trans in New York City. And to do that, to, to find honorees that truly represent uh, the mission of the foundation and the work that we are advancing, we always look for, you know, it's a very genuine process, it's very, where we really celebrate with people for the work that they are doing and for who they really are, so that they're presenting to the world. Fondation Chanel is one to, to be known also for advancing the work. They have been a partner of the foundation, I would say for more than eight years, and it's about time that we celebrate them. And Andrea, are you the same thing? She is from our community. She celebrated, she's partnered and supported the foundation in so many ways. Cynthia Nixon is the work that she's doing outside, not only in New York City, but outside uh, of, um, the New York State and in the New York State, because we want voices, the, the women who carry voices, you know, even further. That's part of them being the trailblazers that they are. The New York Liberty, of, of course, uh, it's a, a, an essential part of, of New York sports and, and also giving validity to the work of women and equity in work. So it's, we want to celebrate them for their strength and their courage. The same thing for Esmona Singha, who's an advocate at Equality, um, equality, equality Now. now. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Equality Now and the work that she represents in protecting the rights of women. Toshi Regan, who's a, who's a trailblazer in her, in, in her work and in utilizing her talent and music to just advance the voice of women and make being a voice for change herself. Um, our breakfast is going to be fabulous. Like every year, it's a place of inspiration for more than 2,000 people to come together. But only it's almost your tribe uh, to, to, to you gather with your tribe to just be strengthened and be inspired, but also you know to take the mandate that we have to make change happen for women a little further and highlighting the good work of such amazing trailblazers. So whether it's, from, it's in form of institution or in form of individual, the foundation takes great pleasure in, 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 you know, those, in celebrating those who are uh, guiding like beacons in our community. So certainly our grantee partners represent all that every day. Yeah, and so that, that's a wonderful segue into your grantee partners and how you qualify uh, these individuals, right? And, and also, is it project-based? Is it the individual? Is it, how do you, how do you make these, these decisions with regards to, I wanna say perhaps the uh, amount of funding that is granted, um, how you raise the funding, right? Because you raise a lot of money for women, a lot. I mean, I saw a figure here of like, uh, you've done like close to 125 million. We are proud of the way the foundation is it, uh, on the ground, you know, whether it is in the way we um, harness the resources and the way we distribute them, we do it together with community. And, and the beauty is that, you know, it's this trust-based model was part of our DNA from the very beginning. It was women listening to women, understanding that women from the communities where issues are, are most apt at answering, at providing solutions for these, uh, for these issues. But also women from those communities are most apt at distributing the fund and identifying the partners for the moment. Uh, so whether it's it, it, we take a lot of pride also at the foundation in being having our ears to the ground because um, it 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 directs our work and it makes us it keeps us honest because every emerging issue we're there from day one acknowledging that it do, it's not the size of the organization that make them successful and make them worthy of being 
of receiving the funding, but it really is their expertise and in and the proximity to the the issues that makes them expert in providing those solutions. And that's why we fund them in a sustainable way. We don't just drop a check one year and leave them. This this support, this this grant making, um, which is participatory, we call it, where community comes together with the foundation to just uh, identify those organizations that are advancing solutions in their community. And so we make sure that uh, that the, the voices, the proximity to solution is there, but also it's sustained. So you not only get a check, like I said, but mm -hmm. also you there are trainings, there are you know building a building of or expanding capacity or resources, ac access to uh, a, every part of the work that you're doing as a leader right. to just succeed in the way, to sustain you. That's beautiful. But it's over a period of five years. It can be consecutive years or years uh, or during the time of uh, the existence of the organization. This is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing all of this with us. I mean, really, it's about fostering, cultivating, and sustaining. That Those are the words I'm leaving with today. Thank you so much. You got it right. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you for making the time for us, everyone. Madeline Holder, New York Women's Foundation Vice President of Development. And once again, we were discussing the 2024 Celebrating Women Breakfast that is set to take place Wednesday, May 8th at 8 a.m. at the New York Marriott Marquis Broadway Ballroom located at 1535 Broadway in Manhattan. And for more information, you can visit nywf.org. Stay tuned. There's more open when we return.